There's a very interesting segment in uh, chapter 12 of William Cooper's Behold the Pale Horse. Um, if anybody's familiar with him, uh, they'll know that he's accredited for predicting many things and uh, exposing the government and its corruption on a very in-depth level. Um, so this is uh, chapter 12 of the uh, secret government. And what do we have here? It says, uh, The government encouraged the manufacture and importation of military firearms for the criminals to use. This is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms. Using drugs and hypnosis on mental patients in a process called Orion, the CIA inculcated the desire in these people to open fire on schoolyards and thus inflame the anti-gun lobby. This plan is well underway and so far is working perfectly. The middle class is begging the government to do away with the Second Amendment. Uh, authors note, I have found that these events have indeed happened all over the country. In every instance that I have investigated, the incident at the women's school in Canada, the shopping center incident in Canada, the Stockton, California massacre, and the murder of Rabbi Mir Kahan, the shooters were all ex-mental patients, or were current mental patients who were all on the drug Prozac. This drug when taken in certain doses, increases the serotonin level in the patient, causing extreme violence. Couple that with a posse, uh, sorry, post-hypnotic suggestion or control through an electronic brain implant or microwave uh, or ELF intrusion, and you get mass murder, ending in every case with the suicide of the perpetrator. Exhume the bodies of the murderers and check for a brain implant. I think you are going to be surprised. In every case, the name of the murderer's doctor or mental treatment facility has been withheld. I believe we will be able to establish intelligence community connections and or connections to known CIA experimental mind control programs when we finally discover who these doctors of death really are. So that kind of tells you right there that, uh, that the CIA has been using people as bait, I guess you could say, programming them under the, uh, the Operation Orion to, uh, to use them to disarm the public. And this was written in 1990. Uh, it was updated. Originally written May 23rd, 1989. Uh, if you haven't checked out his work, I'd definitely suggest checking out William Cooper, uh, especially this book, Behold a Pale Horse. It's very in-depth. Um, and I'm going to show you, uh, after this video here, uh, a broadcast of his from January 22nd, 1997, uh, where he discusses the disarmament of the world through the United Nations, which is exactly what I describe in my documentary, the Sandy, uh, the Sandy Hook documentary. So if anybody hasn't seen that documentary, check it out, uh, and check out the work of William Cooper, because he's, uh, he's definitely got the right idea going on and he has for a long time he was killed by the government actually he was uh, murdered by the uh, by the F FBI and ATF and members of the government they wanted to uh, destroy him because of his uh, his ideas and what he was exposing to the public and he wouldn't disarm himself he wanted to protect himself in the second amendment so he he was killed on his doorstep so check that out too it's, it's all it all relates for sure Welcome back to the Hour of the Time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm William Cooper, and uh, what I'm giving you today is an awful lot of documentation and absolute proof that is irrefutable. All you have to do is don't believe me because I say it. You write down the document numbers that I give you, and you go find those documents, and you read them for yourself. It's going to make you angry. You're going to find out that we have been betrayed. Those people in Washington, D.C. are not about the business of government. They are about the business of treason. They have sold us down the river. They are engaged in lies and deception and manipulation to bring us into a government that we would never accept willingly, nor would we even consider if we knew what was really going on. And some of us do know. 
And those of us who do know, ladies and gentlemen, are fighting it tooth and nail. The biggest battle is to wake up the American sheeple and convert them into real people so that we have a chance. Don't go away. Disarmament, the United States Initiative, United States Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Publication 8, General Series 5, released September 1962. And this again has an introduction, ladies and gentlemen, called The Call for Leadership by John J. McCloy, who at that time was the leader or executive director of the Council on Foreign Relations, who outlined the disarmament of the world led by the United States and the Soviet Union. He talks about, and I quote, the complexities of disarmament, the Geneva test ban negotiations, the United States' determination to halt the arms race, the disarmament agency, the common market, working toward a world without war and a new world order. A new world order. You see, George Bush didn't just pull that term out of the ether. History of disarmament negotiations, U.S. proposal for disarmament, needs for adequate verification, question of the proper forum, Improving United Nations peacekeeping machinery, describing the forces that will be combined by the two major powers to police the world. Taking the first steps. United States outlines initial proposals of program for general and complete disarmament by Dean Rusk. Disarmament, a worldwide responsibility. Laying bases for disarmament. U.S. proposals for work of conference. Call for early action on testing, etc., 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 etc. The dilemma? How to do it, he says. Quote, I appreciate that I am here before a sophisticated audience today. Most of you have read the reports that one Polaris submarine carries more explosive power than all the bombs dropped by both sides during World War II, including the two atomic bombs, end quote. Those are the scare statements. You have to understand that the Cold War, ladies and gentlemen, was a scam to begin with to bring this all about. And the Soviet Union has recently released publicly the documents which prove that all during the Cold War, their bombers never once carried not even one atomic weapon. It was a scare tactic to bring this about and fund the development of technology through the willing giving of tax dollars in the face of a Cold War enemy by the American people and the people of the world to develop the technology to control the people of the world under the New World Order. Quote, Toward a world without war, a summary of United States disarmament efforts, past and present. End quote. United States Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Publication 10, General Series 6, released October 1962. Quote, World order will be secured only when the whole world has laid down these weapons which seem to offer us present security but threaten the future survival of the human race. End quote. There was never any danger of that, and still is not. President John F. Kennedy said that in his State of the Union message, January 11, 1962, the whole time knowing that there was no threat, their intercontinental ballistic missiles never were a threat to the United States of America. The Soviet Union never even had the capability of manufacturing one single computer chip, ladies and gentlemen, or even a transistor. It was beyond their capability. The American Journal of International Law, Volume 56, 1962, published by the American Society of International Law. Publication Office, Lancaster Press, Incorporated, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Executive and Editorial Office, 2223, Massachusetts Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C. Copyright, 1962. This is the American Journal of International Law, ladies and gentlemen, and in here it outlines the official documents. Disarmament. Outline of Basic Provisions of a Treaty on General and Complete Disarmament in a Peaceful World, submitted by the United States Delegation to the United Nations Committee on Disarmament, Geneva, April 18, 1962, in which it outlines everything that I have already discussed in an official treaty, ladies and gentlemen, which was signed and which was ratified by the Senate, calling for the complete disarmament of all weapons of all nations, including your weapons. Progressive Inspection for Disarmament. The concept of progressive zonal inspection, United States Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, publication 13, released January 1963. This proposes the zonal concept, and the beginning of it was the school weapons ban zones. The school weapons ban zones. The second 
implement, implementation of this was the recent law passed that says that the BATF can set up roadblocks anywhere they want to in places that they determine and so label as no gun zones stop every vehicle and every pedestrian and search them for weapons and seize any weapons that are found. That is in effect today. It goes on. The extent of inspection is related to amount of disarmament. The amount of assurance is related to degree of risk to parties to the treaty. Principles of disarmament. Treaty outline. One, by stages within specified limits. Two, balanced. No party can gain a military advantage. No party can suffer a loss of security. Three, verified during and after it occurs. The extent of verification is to be related to the amount of disarmament and the degree of risks involved. Verification of both arms reduction and arms level. Four, accompanied by progressive strengthening of the United Nations. Accompanied by progressive strengthening of the United Nations. Carried out in each, this is number five, carried out in each successive stage after the decision that all measures in preceding stage will have been accomplished and verified. All arrangements for the next stage are ready to operate. Objects and activities to be verified during disarmament. Number one, destruction of armaments. Two, conversion of armaments to peaceful uses. Three, reduction of armed forces. Four, halting or limiting of declared production, testing, and other specified activities. Five, agreed levels of armaments and armed forces. Six, absence of undeclared production, testing, and other specified activities which are subject to termination or limitation. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are a vassal state of the United Nations by treaty and by passage of the United Nations Participation Act. This has been admitted in law. It has been admitted by a Supreme Court judge who has stated emphatically that whenever a judge is deciding anything that has to do with the Constitution, he must have on his desk a copy of the Constitution for the United States of America and a copy of the Charter of the United Nations. When the two disagree, the United Nations Charter will prevail. Don't believe it? Get off your butts and start digging because it's true. Disarmament, they say, is to be balanced, verified under progressive zonal inspection plan, division of national territories into zones. The first division in the United States of America has been gun bans in school zones. That's what regional government is all about. Declaration to the International Disarmament Organization of total level of armaments, forces, and specified types of activities subject to verification in each zone. Selection of zones for inspection. Declaration to the International Disarmament Organization of the exact locations of armaments, forces, and specified types of activities which are within the zone or zones selected for inspection in that step. Arrangements to assure against undeclared movements of the objects of verification. Aerial and mobile ground inspection of objects of verification within the zone selected. Once a zone has been selected and inspected, it remains open for further inspection while verification is being extended to additional zones. That's number seven. Number eight, when the first zones have been inspected in accordance with an agreed time schedule, arms levels would again be declared as in two. Then the next zone or zones would be selected and inspected as in four through seven. I expect, ladies and gentlemen, that the next zones will be national parks and forests and followed closely by land under the auspices of the Bureau of Land Management, and so on and so on. By the end of the final stage, when all disarmament measures have been completed, inspection will have been extended to all zones in the territories of the parties to the treaty. Disarmament is to be carried out within definite time limits by stages, and each stage is divided into three steps. Selection of zones may be won by the International Disarmament Organization, two, by the non-host Western or Soviet bloc, three, by random choice, or four, some combination of the above. The break of the Soviet Union occurred, ladies and gentlemen, the breakup, to fool the American people into accepting disarmament, not understand really what this is all about. You see, these people who run the world understand sheeple better than you would ever believe. And you'd better quit being sheeple right this moment. You'd better pull the wool out from over your eyes, stop being hoodwinked, take off that fur coat, stand up on your own two feet, stop buying, join a militia. If you can't find one, form one. Get ready to fight for your freedoms or lose them all without a whimper. 
And if you're not ready to fight, I don't want to hear a whimper out of anybody. Get a book entitled Disarmament Proposals, published in 1964. The author is Son, S-O-H-N. Disarmament Proposals, 1964, Son. It outlines the entire plan, including the disarmament of the individual American common people. Arms Control and National Security, Second Edition, United States Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Washington, D.C., 20451. And why should it work now if it failed before? Arms Control and National Security, Second Edition, published by the United States Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Washington, D.C., 20451. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen very carefully. I'm going fast, I know that, because I have to cover an awful lot of material in a very short period of time, and this is the only way to do it. As everyone knows, I'm quoting directly from Why Should It Work Now If It Failed Before? Arms Control and National Security. Quote, as everyone knows, most attempts at disarmament throughout history have ended in failure. One might wonder, therefore, why any present or future attempts, even at partial disarmament, should be any more successful. After all, the political organization or disorganization of the world remains essentially as it has been in past centuries. Despite the existence of the United Nations, power remains polarized at the level of the nation state. End quote. So understand, folks, that this is not about prevention of war. It's about establishing a world government. It says, and I quote, there is a new factor in the picture which in the end may outweigh all the others. It is technology, end quote. Technology. Quote, even as it has introduced new problems, technology has also brought an unprecedented promise of solutions. In the first place, it has brought an incentive for arms control and disarmament agreements, which historically neither common sense nor statesmanship has ever been sufficient to provide. In the second place, it is equipping us with advanced means of surveillance, thus making politically acceptable agreements which earlier would have not been possible. The 1963 Limited Test Ban Treaty, which prohibits nuclear tests in the atmosphere, underwater, and in outer space, is a case in point. This treaty was made necessary by technology. It also was made possible by technology. End quote. It talks about a new approach to security using this technology. It also talks about, ladies and gentlemen, a complete definition of the term arms control. And that would fill a page. And even then, not everyone would be satisfied. For practical purposes, however, arms control might be summed up as efforts to reduce the likelihood of war and to limit its effects if it occurs. It thus covers a broad spectrum of possible measures. And listen to this. Quote, history and advancing technology have combined to make arms control a highly complex subject calling for the concerted efforts of military men, diplomats, physical and social scientists, jurists and others. In this very same report on page 18, and remember folks, this was published in 1970 under Open Skies, which by the way has been passed and is in effect. It's the Open Skies Treaty. Quote, this new approach was marked by President Eisenhower's Open Skies Plan in 1955, which called for reciprocal aerial inspection of the United States and the Soviet Union and the exchange of military blueprints by the two countries. This plan did not meet with acceptance by the Soviets, who said that such aerial surveillance should not be permitted until the last stage of a comprehensive disarmament process. It has been approved. All signatories to the treaty have signed it. It is in effect, and we are in the last stage. Remember, it says, quote, until the last stage, end quote. So those of you who think we're still in stage one or stage two, you'd better rearrange your gray matter because we are in the last stage. There's only four more years until their set date for the formation of this new world order. Actually, three more years. It's 1997, isn't it? They have three years to disarm the American people according to their plans. Do you understand that? Three years to disarm the American people according to their plans. The Open Sky Treaty was just signed about three years ago, and Russian aircraft overfly the United States to inspect the disarmament of the United States now on a daily basis, and we are overflying what used to be known as the Soviet Union. We are disarming, they are not. According to their policy, they will not until everybody else does, although they say they are, and although our government is fooling us into believing that they are, 
They are not disarming. Understand also, ladies and gentlemen, it is a scam, because if anything goes wrong, if anything goes wrong, the military might of what used to be known as the Soviet Union will enforce the formation of the New World Order. Accompanied by the treasonous military officers of the United States Military Services, all four of them, who are in total complicity and agreement, and are even now, as we speak, acting as the police force for the New World Order. They know what they are doing. They are sworn to protect the Constitution for the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and regardless, they are engaged in treason. So if you're looking for our own armed forces to save us, you're looking in the wrong place. The only defense you have is the militia and those members of the armed forces who at the specified time will realize what they were, are doing and come over to us with their men and their equipment. And that will happen. I don't know on what scale, but it will happen. Quote, the 10th special session of the General Assembly, the first session to be devoted to disarmament, opened on 23rd May, 1978, at the United Nations headquarters, New York. The Assembly concluded its work in the early hours of July the 1st. Earlier during that final meeting on 30 June, it adopted resolutions S10-2, containing the final document of the 10th special session of the General Assembly, comprising an introduction, a declaration, and a program of action and establishing new international machinery for disarmament. Now listen to what I just said, establishing new international machinery for disarmament. And that's that multi nation force that I told you about that's here with thousands of pieces of Russian armament armored personnel carriers, tanks decontamination vehicles which means that they may even use biological or chemical warfare upon us on page 22 it also decided to establish a program of fellowships on disarmament Quote, implementation of the priorities mentioned in the program should lead to general and complete disarmament under effective international control, the Assembly asserted, end quote. And, quote, the Committee on Disarmament was to undertake the elaboration of a comprehensive program of disarmament in order to ensure that the goal of general and complete disarmament became a reality in a world in which the new international economic order was strengthened. Let me say that again. The new international economic order was strengthened. That's a buzzword for the new world order. And you're still listening to Rush Limbaugh. You think he's telling you the truth. You better wake up. He's a detractor. He's a scam. He's a shill for the new world order. Quote, necessary measures should be taken to maintain international peace and security, including the obligation of states to place at the disposal of the United Nations agreed manpower for an international peace force equipped with agreed types of armaments to ensure that the United Nations was able to deter or suppress any threat or use of arms in violation of its purposes and principles. You see, they're not talking about treaties that we made. They're talking about the United Nations as a world government what this is all about. Quote, general and complete disarmament under strict and effective international control should permit states to have at their disposal only those non-nuclear forces, armaments, and facilities agreed to be necessary for internal order, end quote. No new world order. Rockefeller is not involved. The Trilateral Commission is not involved. The Council of Foreign Relations is not involved. Newt Gingrich is not involved. Bob Dole is not involved. Bill Clinton is not involved. He's just a nice guy with a, you know, with a wife that has a big mouth or something. They're all involved, or they wouldn't be there. They admit it in their own publications. This is the final document. On June 30th, 1978, at the end of the special session, the General Assembly adopted Resolution S-10-2, by which it adopted also the final document of the 10th special session of the General Assembly, providing a broad platform for further efforts by the United Nations in the field of disarmament, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. New world economic order, new world order. Words echoed over and over again years ago. The special session, and I'm quoting, 
must demonstrate to the world that the fundamental principles of the Charter continue to serve as the guiding light for the international community in its quest for a new economic, political, and social order based on a equality and justice for all, end quote. That's socialist drivel, ladies and gentlemen. All the socialist regimes that have ever occurred are risen to power in the history of the world. You'll see that there was never equality for all, and there certainly was never justice for anybody. Limbaugh and all the others know about this, but they will not tell you about it, because if they do, they lose their radio shows, and they lose the millions of dollars that they've sold out for. Resolution S-10-2 is recommended by Ad Hoc Committee of 10th Special Session AS-1023 Part 1, adopted without vote by Assembly on 30 June 1978. Without vote. Without vote. Quote, the nuclear and conventional arms buildup threatens to stall the efforts aimed at reaching the goals of development to become an obstacle on the road of achieving the new international economic order and to hinder the solution of other vital problems facing mankind. Conference of the Committee on Disarmament. And this is from 15th Annual Report to the Congress. United States Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Publication 88, released July 1976. The Geneva-based, quote, the Geneva-based Conference of the Committee on Disarmament held two sessions during 1975 that proved to be among the most active in the 13-year history of this principal multilateral forum for arms control negotiations. Its 31 member nations represent a geographic and political cross-section of the world. The representatives of the United States and of the Soviet Union serve as co-chairman. Ambassador Joseph Martin, Jr. led the United States delegation. Quote, the committee's agenda included several new issues that had been referred to it by the 1974 United Nations General Assembly. The question of nuclear weapon free zones arms control implications of nuclear explosions for peaceful purposes, and environmental warfare, in addition to the topic of chemical weapons restraints and a comprehensive nuclear test ban, end quote. And under environmental warfare, listen to this, quote, the highlight of the session was the August 21st tabling by the United States and Soviet representatives of identical texts of a draft. Let me say that again. The highlight of the sessions was the August 21st tabling by the United States and Soviet representatives of identical texts of a draft. Listen to this. Identical texts of a draft entitled, quote, Convention on the Prohibition of Military or Any Other Hostile Use of Environmental Modification Techniques, end quote. And it goes on and on and on and on. And they do have the ability to modify weather and just about make it whatever they want. I don't know if they've been doing that. But they have the ability. And we have found treaties that exist that acknowledge that they have the ability and prohibit the signatories to the agreement from using such technology to modify the weather or any other part of the environment without notifying the country that will be infected. It doesn't say they can't, it just says they have to notify. <laughs> and it goes on and on. The members, ladies and gentlemen, of the United Nations are fully aware of the conviction of their peoples that the question of general and complete disarmament is the, of the utmost importance and that peace, security, and economic and social development are indivisible, and they have therefore recognized that the corresponding obligations and responsibilities are universal. You see what's happening? In this country, we're supposed to have representatives that we vote for, and they're supposed to represent the wishes of the people who put them into office. But they are circumventing that through treaties, and through the representative to the UN and ambassadors to foreign countries, they're committing us to things that the American people don't know anything about, never voted for, would never accept in a million years, and are blatantly unconstitutional.
unconstitutional, which means they are engaged in treason, for they are dismantling and destroying the United States of America right before our very eyes. Well, it's taking me a long time to do this. I wanted to get through a lot more than what I'm going to get through today, but we still have tomorrow. And the next day, so never fear, it's only Wednesday. Conventional weapons control. And this again from the 15th annual report to the Congress. Quote, during the spring session, Ambassador Martin urged the committee explore practical means of restraining the worldwide competition in conventional arms, end quote. Conventional arms, ladies and gentlemen, that means your rifle. Your rifle. Quote, in addition to reiterating the United States' willingness to assist in the establishment of conventional arms control arrangements on a regional basis, Ambassador Martin set forth for the committee's consideration principles applicable worldwide to the acquisition and transfer of conventional arms. These principles are discussed in greater detail in the chapter on arms transfers. That program, passing through all the necessary stages, should lead to general and complete disarmament under effective international control, end quote. And now it doesn't say under control of the government of the United States of America or your local police department or your sheriff. It says international control. Now what do you think general and complete disarmament means? It means every single weapon in the hands of every single person except those designated as the internal police force, the state police, to maintain internal order. Are you beginning to get some lights turned on in your head? I hope so. I really hope so. Notice, folks, it does not say partial disarmament. It doesn't say just the military. It does not say military forces. And remember, in an earlier publication, it even included the police. It says complete disarmament. And it does include the police, except for the state police force, which will have only the arms necessary to maintain internal order. Quote, Genuine and lasting peace can only be created through the effective implementation of the security system provided by the Charter of the United Nations and the speedy and substantial reduction of arms and armed forces by international agreement and mutual example leading ultimately to general and complete disarmament under effective international control, end quote. That's why bases are closing, ladies and gentlemen, to the military, but they're not really closing. They're closing but not closing. Oh, Coop's lost it, right? How can they be closing but not closing? They were said they were closing to save money, and then they don't close and spend money to establish those bases as prisons, ladies and gentlemen, and mental treatment centers. If you don't believe that, go around to all the closed bases throughout the country and you'll see that either the entire installation or a portion of it is now a prison or a mental treatment center. And when the New World Order is created, and as they begin to round us up, those prisons and those mental treatment facilities will be populated by patriots who in the New World Order will be said to be suffering from a psychosis. You see, we'll be considered to be primitives, Klingons, if you will. Klingons who refuse to adapt to the new world socialist order will be called mentally ill. Star Trek is brainwashing your children. You didn't even know it. What is it? Why, isn't there some kind of a galactic federation? Hmm? A new world space order of all the different planets? And it's socialist, you see. None of those people have any property. None of them have any money. None of them have any families. Their whole cause is devoted to the furtherance of this federation, this new world order. And every time you see children enter the picture with parents, you see that it creates havoc. Anytime someone engages in a love affair, it creates havoc. And it's never consummated with marriage or lasting 
family life ever. Not ever. And who are they always fighting, ladies and gentlemen? The one group in the galaxy who refuses to buy their baloney and wants to be left alone. The Klingons. Clinging on to the old ways. And so your children are being brainwashed that there's nothing in the past that's worth anything. That socialism is all there is. If you don't believe me, take your blinders off, get some old episodes of Star Trek, and sit down and start watching it with your brain. And there's a lot of others. It's not the only one. That tube in your living room is a brainwashing machine, and it is destroying this country, or at least destroying the minds of some people in this country who are because they become then apathetic, ignorant, stupid sheeple by their inaction and their inability to think are destroying this country. On page 45, under the yearbook of the United Nations, 1978, it talks about Quote, the study should be made in the context of how disarmament can contribute to the establishment of the new international economic order, end quote. Do you know that this year in Europe, the European Union is supposed to go to one currency? That will be the first cemented world state, if it happens. But there are now countries in Europe who are having second thoughts. Some of them listen to this broadcast and others. And they're telling the European Union, no, we'll see what happens. I don't have a crystal ball. But folks, you tell me no new world order, no new world economic order, no plot, no complicity of the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the members of Congress, the members of the executive branch of government and the officer corps of all four of our military services. I tell you that you are completely insane if you really believe that. You see, in the last four and a half years, I haven't just done one two-hour broadcast. I've been documenting this treason for four and a half solid years. Anyone who tells you that there's no new world order, no new world economic order, no plot, no conspiracy, no complicity of the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the members of Congress, the members of the executive branch of government, including the President and his cabinet, and the highest ranking military officers of all four of our military services, is a liar. They're part of the problem. They're part of the enemy. They're leading you down the garden path because the facts tell us otherwise. Remember, the symbol of international socialism is the red rose. It was the symbol of the rose and cross which came out of the ancient mysteries which were suppressed, suppressed between the cold north wind of the snow, where the seed planted by the adepts, concealing their true religion, their true philosophy, wait for the spring thaw when the rising sun and the generative force, the phallus, will generate and regenerate the old pagan religions under the guise of a new one-world religion and one-world totalitarian socialist government. They work for that day. They live for it. Everything that they do is in the furtherance of that agenda, and they laugh at all of you who can't even see what's going on right in front of your eyes. When this happens, freedom will die forever, for socialism is a binding system. It creates victims who are dependent upon the state, and the state becomes more important than any individual or any group of individuals. And everything that everyone does must be in furtherance of the state. All information is controlled. Certain books will disappear and are already disappearing, ladies and gentlemen, from your libraries and from the Library of Congress. Anyone who says anything or does anything that is considered to be politically incorrect will just disappear. You'll never see them again. When you reach a certain age, you will be put into an old folks' home 
where two weeks later you will die of a stroke. And the emperor's circus has already returned. It's not just the Super Bowl anymore, ladies and gentlemen. It's real gladiators. I watched on television the other day two men in a ring, barefisted, battling it out on television in a huge stadium filled by thousands of people. You know what that's for? I know men who don't know anything at all in this entire world except who plays third base for the Mets. And they think that that is a great achievement. And they can't wait to get together with their buddies so they can talk about who plays third base for the Mets. And they feel really intelligent and big and smart. And I shake my head and walk away because they're fools. They have given up what is intelligent and what is smart and what they should know to be popular or to be liked. That's high school stuff. We're talking about enslaving the human race here and all they want to know is what time the Super Bowl is on. And women have their own little cul-de-sacs that they get in and spin around in, chasing their tail also. And they all know that something is terribly wrong, and they all talk about that. But they don't really want to know what's really wrong, and they sure as hell don't want to have any responsibility for fixing it. For that requires that they stick their neck out and take risk, and that they get on somebody's list and that maybe they end up in prison or dead. Just like every person who's ever fought for liberty and freedom in the history of this country and in the history of the world, some of them always end up in prison or dead. But aren't they the people that we've always revered? Aren't they the people we've loved the most? Aren't they the people whom, in whose memory we have set up monuments and memorials all over this country? Aren't they the people we hold up to our children as examples of heroes who led the proper life and did the proper thing? Why is it, ladies and gentlemen, that we will very gladly slap our children on the butts and send them off to die in some godforsaken desert or some little pukey island down in the Caribbean, which has nothing to do with our country, our freedom, or the Constitution for the United States of America, to see our young men, helicopter pilots, dead, being drugged naked through the streets of Somalia, to watch our veterans of the Gulf War sicken and weaken and give birth to deformed children and genetic freaks. Why is it that we do that? Why is it that we pat them on their butts to send them off to their fates in these godforsaken places where those people who live there don't even care about anything or they wouldn't be in the situations they're in. Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Why do we do that and call them patriots and tell them that they're serving their country and if they die, we go to their funeral, we sit there, we shed a few tears and we accept the folded flag and we take it back and put it on our mantle and display it as if it's some kind of great achievement? And those same people who pat their children on the butts and send them off to these godforsaken places are cowards, are afraid to stand up in their own country and really take a risk and fight for freedom and for the Constitution for the United States of America. Why is that? Well, I know the answer, but I'm not going to tell it to you because I think you know the answer too. And I think you're going to have to deal with that answer in your own heart. 
You see, ladies and gentlemen, I know there really is a Satan, a Lucifer, but he's not out there running around in the woods somewhere, and he doesn't sit up there on some planet looking down at us, and he doesn't fly around in the air. He's real. And I can tell you where he can be found all the time, every day. You see, you take human beings out of the picture, there is no Satan, there is no Lucifer, there is no evil. There's just the perfect machinations and workings of nature, the natural laws prevail. But you put one human being in the picture, and he will bring Satan with him. Put one woman in the picture, she will bring Satan with her. For Satan exists in the human heart and in nowhere else. That's where you will find him all the time, every time. If you want to get rid of Satan, you have to get rid of humanity. If you really believe that imperfect men can rule over imperfect men without their power being checked and without being made responsible for their actions, and if you think that peoples will not be enslaved without the means to protect and defend themselves, which is arms, guns, then you're a fool and you don't know anything about history. But I'm telling you now, you had better learn, because we are on the brink of destruction. President Clinton says militias are un-American. In all the wars of the United States, I'm just going to give you a few. The Revolutionary War, fought from April 19th, 1775, to April 11th, 1783. There were 130,711 regular troops, 164,080 militia. In the Creek Indian War, I won't give you the dates, I'll just give you the numbers. There were 600 regulars, 13,000 militia. War of 1812 with Great Britain, 85,000 regulars, 471,000 militia. The Seminole War, 1,000 regulars, 6,900 militia. The Black Hawk Indian War, 1,000 regulars, 5,000 militia. The Cherokee Disturbance, 9,000 militia, no regulars. The Creek Indian War, 935 regulars, 12,000 militia. The Florida Indian War, 11,000 regulars, 29,000 militia. The Aristook Disturbance, 1,500 militia only. The War with Mexico, listen carefully. In the War with Mexico, fought April 24th, 1846 to July 4th, 1848, 30,954 regular troops, 73,776 militia. I could go on and on and on. And this is taken so that you can find it also, ladies and gentlemen, taken from a dictionary printed in 1939, copyright 1939 by the John C. Winston Company, Dictionary of the English Language, page 1142. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Don't miss tomorrow's episode of The Hour of the Time. God bless each and every single one of you, and may God save this republic.